Welcome to Get Offset, my name is Emily, and I'm here today with the Music Man Stingray RS. It is a uh, take on their very classic Stingray body. You can see the ring light and the reflection that I am using to illuminate these guitar pedals. Pan, cut to guitar pedals. Cut to guitar pedals. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, all right, cool. Uh, let's talk about this guitar. This is uh, far and away the most expensive guitar I have ever demoed on this channel as a demo. Ernie Ball sent me this to borrow to uh, show all of you fine people. Uh, it retails at $2,300 or 24 one of those. And even though it is an expensive guitar, it feels expensive. Like it feels like a top notch, supremely quality instrument. Uh, for the price, it's I, I feel like it's fair. And so it comes down to whether or not you would spend that much money on a guitar. But if you did, you would not be disappointed with the build quality of this. Take that off for a second. Uh, you can see it has this beautiful torque guard, this powder blue body, matching torque to get to your uh, switch, your toggle switch and your vibrato system, your block vibrato system. I'm probably just gonna cut the audio from that part, turn it down in the meantime. That beautifully sculpted neck heel is extremely comfortable. You can see the angle on that neck heel. If you were playing up in the upper frets, is you're gonna find it exceedingly comfortable. Uh, nice polished frets, super smooth fret ends. Truly beautiful craftsmanship. I cannot say enough about the craftsmanship. The nut looks absolutely stunning. Uh, the bridge has really nice hardware. Everything feels super top notch. One little touch that I like is there is this rest covering the saddles, but uh, unlike old Jazz Masters, which had that, that like little stop rest there, you can still get your palm muting on if you really, really want to. So that's just one of those thoughtful elements that I really appreciate in a guitar, uh, a guitar that has been uh, designed by people who built it. Uh, a C-shaped neck, I wouldn't call that too slim. I definitely have slimmer uh, neck profiles, also fatter ones. So I feel like this rests pretty comfortably in the middle. Man, every time I look at this, I'm like the craftsmanship is really astounding. Uh, it'd be hard to photograph but the, uh, the, I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna go over here. It's gonna be out of focus, but you can see the fretboard going past the nut slot there. Really, really, really neat. Uh, I did just tune this up, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna check the intonation out of the box. Uh, so when it's my guitar and I've been playing it for a while, I do tend to do a setup on it, but out of the box, I kinda want you to see what you all are going to get. So uh, high E. In tune, in tune, in tune, B, perfect, G, perfect, D, perfect, yeah, that, <laughs> that kind of did a little wiggle and settled in the middle, so. That's actually a little sharp. Intonated perfectly. Out of the box. That's the kind of thing that you get when you spend a premium on a guitar. The pickups are Al Nico 5, uh, Ernie Ball, Music Man, Al Nico 5, Humbuckers. So I assume Wound, Made in House. It doesn't say that they're OEM, Seymour Duncans or anything, uh, like some other guitars. So, uh, yeah, you, I already mentioned the pedals. I. Uh, I wanted to try this out with a couple different styles of dirt pedal um, because, you know, things like delay, reverb, I have a lot of fun with them. I love putting them in demos, but you want to hear how these humbuckers are going to act with uh, dirt pedals. These all look really boutique uh, and they are all boutique builders. Uh, I have, starting from the uh, left over here, the Alchemy Audio Awful Waffle. That's a Crowther Hot Cake. Uh, the Pelican Noise Works. 
50-50. That's two DOD pedals. And then I have the Gale by Spruce Effects, which is just my one of my favorite drive pedals of all time. But we're going to start on some clean tones. I'm going to start on the uh, neck pickup. Don't know why I decided to play that. A guitar demo is stupid if it doesn't include an open ear A ringing out. Let's go to the middle position. Let's do the bridge. come downstairs after he has me playing shotgun. So that's a, just a little bit of noodling. Oops. Uh, let's, let's play something a little bit fancier. Let me have another sip of coffee in my Rat Boys mug. Mm. I'm filming this at 9 a.m. Through the Strymon Iridium, I did forget to mention that. Strymon Iridium round B, I will also take it through some other settings. Right now the gain's at noon, which is why it's pretty clean on that round setting. <laughs> I really am enjoying having that little rest there. Uh, I, I'm not gonna have a weird mark on my hand when I'm done playing. All right. Uh, so that was the Fender setting on low gain. I'm going to crank the gain and compensate the volume on the fender. This is in the middle, I'm going to start in the bridge this time. Thank you. 
this always sounds weird. Alright, now I'm going to go to move into that Vox setting. Keep the gain there. Right now I have the gain at noon on the Vox, and then I will crank it, do not you worry. Get a more overdriven Vox sound. Uh, middle. Let's move to the Marshall sound in the middle. to the fender middle I'm going to start to try it through some dirt pedals but this guitar is uh, really a joy to play it feels very easy to play um, you don't there's no fighting this guitar as as they say sometimes but uh yeah I'm really having a it just makes it makes it feel easy I think it's those frets jumbo frets let's move back up to the neck I'm gonna run through some gale sounds just for fun.
that's the gale. It's a gale. Uh, let's try it through a DOD kind of sound. Yeah. I'm on the normal toggle. another DOD 
and then the I. Back to the Vox for the awful waffle. I was I was a little bit thrown off by how cool that sounded. demo with Prince so I feel like Prince is a good place to end this demo um and uh yeah let me give my final thoughts on this beautiful instrument let me turn off that annoying ring light boom it's gone all right so this is a $2,400 guitar it plays like a $2,400 guitar like this feels very price appropriate does anyone want to see how well it stayed in tune still in tune still in tune Still in tune, still in tune, still in tune, still in tune. It stayed in tune really well, even with a little bit of vibrato action, a lot of bend action, uh, <laughs> probably poor technique on my part. Uh, it stayed in tune really, really well. Uh, it is a medium, medium weight guitar. I wouldn't call this overly heavy. I don't think it's heavier than the Strat. Uh, I think it might be a little bit heavier than this telly. It's obviously heavier than my tuna tone because that thing weighs five pounds. Everything is heavy to compared to that tuna tone. Um, I wish I could keep this. I've never been so sad to send a guitar back. <laughs> But uh, I am really, really happy. Thank you to Ernie Ball for sending this to me to play. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with this instrument. Uh, I have a soft spot for the Stingray shape. My husband's a bassist and he has a Stingray, uh, a Sterling Stingray, not, not a Music Man one. So this shape has appealed to me. This color, this, this light blue, uh, I believe they call it powder blue with this torque guard, I think is very handsome. I think the pickups sound really good, have a lot of output. Sound really good clean. And that's something that I feel budget guitars, because I do a lot of budget guitars, I feel like a lot of them don't do those crystal cleans very well. And this did cleans, and I, I thought I liked the way this took cleans, uh, and I loved the way this took dirt. So I would say if that's, if this is your budget for a guitar, uh, I think most people would be, be very happy with this. I found it very comfortable to play. I wasn't sure because like this body is so big. So I mean, yeah, it, it still fits under your arm, but it's like, it is a, it is a thicker this than I'm used to uh, on non uh, hollow body or non semi hollow guitars. Um, so I, and I can wear it pretty high without it really interfering. Um, but I, 
I didn't notice it. I feel like it balances really well, probably because of the extra oomph on this side. Um, and I just really think this neck is pretty, pretty stunning. So uh, that is it. That's my 30-ish minute lunch break look at the uh, Music Man uh, <laughs> Stingray RS. Yes, not Sterling RS, Stingray RS. Gosh, this is this, this roasted figured neck. And the picture, the one in the pictures I think is overly, overly figured, but um, this, I don't find this to be overly figured or distracting at all. I'll take the tuner off now so you can see it does have the uh, four over two headstock. Uh, I feel like this headstock matches this body uh, pretty, pretty well. No cosmetic issues on the one that I got. Uh, it's unusual for me to have cosmetic issues on guitars. It's, it's rare for me to find cosmetic issues on guitars that cost over a thousand dollars. I have not had that experience. But yes, I liked it. Thank you again. Please like, comment, subscribe below. All that stuff. If you want to buy one of these, uh, you please consider using our Reverb or Sweetwater affiliate links. Uh, if you want to buy anything you see in this video, Reverb and Sweetwater affiliate links are helpful. Or buy directly from builders, especially boutique builders. It's always a nice thing to do. Uh, using our affiliate links doesn't cost you any extra. It does help support this channel, though. And I hope that matters as much to you as it does to me. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Thanks for understanding. Until next time, my name is Emily. Goodbye.